Gaming Bolt presents 15 things you need to know before you buy Sea of Thieves. If there's one complaint people seem to have with Xbox One more often than not, it's that it doesn't have nearly as many console exclusives as its direct competitors do. Thankfully enough, there's some pretty interesting stuff in the pipeline and one of the most high profile releases slated for the system has to be Rare's Sea of Thieves. And there's no two ways about it, it looks good really good. In this feature, we're going to list 15 of the major talking points that have us excited about the upcoming cooperative pirate action game. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. Sailing Sea of Thieves, like so many other games on the market in the current generation, will be a game with immense focus on co-op play, and nowhere will that be more apparent than what is obviously going to be the game's most dominant mechanic. Sailing while sailing the high seas, players will have to work together and take up different roles, ranging from steering, navigation, hoisting and unhoisting the sails, manning the cannons, and everything else that comes along with ownership of the ship. A focus on skill. One of the aspects that makes Sea of Thieves sound very interesting is the fact that rather than focusing on things such as level curve or stat buffs and the like, how well you do or don't do in the game will depend first and foremost on how good you are at it. So yeah, there won't be any classes or specializations in the game. Something that could easily backfire admittedly, but also something that if done right can make for a much more immersive experience. Let's hope this specifically becomes a case of the latter. Ships Ships are going to be pretty important in Sea of Thieves. We know, shocking, right? Considering they're going to be perhaps the single most important part of the gameplay loop here, it makes sense that there's going to be a variety of ships available in the game for players to make use of, ranging from small skiffs that can be manned by a single player, to large hulking ships that need cooperation between entire groups of players, across a variety of different roles. Of course, each of these will also have their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. For instance, while the smaller ships will be more agile and more easily maneuverable, the larger ones will be equipped with more weapons and will sail faster with the wind. Upgrades and Customization While playing Sea of Thieves, you'll be able to customize and upgrade both your pirate and your ships. These will, of course, vary in nature, from aesthetic upgrades to actual mechanical improvements. Not only will you be able to unlock new outfits and new gear, you'll also be able to replace your limbs with classic pirate-fashioned prosthetics. As far as your ships are concerned, you'll be able to upgrade and fit them with everything from new cannons and sails to figureheads and anchors. The Game World Given the fact that Sea of Thieves is a game about pirates, most of the world will be covered in water, you know, like the real world. But it will also be dotted with several islands, which will vary in style and flavor. For instance, on one hand there will be caves and dense forests, areas where you'll be able to explore and look for loot and booty, while on the other hand there will be areas with more civilization such as ports and cities, where players will be able to interact with NPCs and start new quests. Also, just in case you were wondering, none of this will be procedurally generated, rest easy my friends. Enemies A pirate's life isn't easy. While playing Sea of Thieves, players will come across a variety of enemy types. From the gameplay footage we've seen, and we've seen quite a bit of it, enemies such as sharks and undead skeletons have already been confirmed. Well, we also know for a fact that krakens will also be included in the game, because what's a pirate game without krakens? And of course there will be other pirates as well. That incidentally brings us to our next point. No NPC ships. You'll be running into a lot of other pirates and pirate ships in Sea of Thieves, and be it for fights over treasure, or just for the joy of naval battles, there will be plenty of pirate versus pirate action in the game. The interesting thing though is that none of the pirates and pirate ships in Sea of Thieves will be NPCs, they'll all be other players. It'll be interesting to see just how well the game manages to balance these two very different kinds of encounters. Against actual player controlled pirates and ships on the one hand, and against AI enemy types on the other. PvP. Encounters against any other pirates you come across in Sea of Thieves definitely sound interesting though. Players will be able to engage each other in naval battles, complete with cannon fire and boarding each other's ships. Interestingly enough though, players will also be able to shoot themselves, or other players, out of a cannon onto other ships. 
On a smaller scale, one-on-one -on -one battles versus other players also look promising, with weapons such as cutlasses and pistols and what have you thrown into the mix. There is the concern that with no skill trees and class specializations, one-on-one -on -one combat could be a little shallow, so let's hope Rare have already taken that potential issue into consideration. No overarching story. Interestingly enough, Sea of Thieves won't have any kind of overarching narrative. Rare's focus with this game is clearly on providing an experience that can be an endless loop of gameplay, with an absolute focus on player-made moments and emergent open-world gameplay, so this choice does make sense. However, with no single end goal to work toward, will the game be hurt by a lack of focus? After all, even other shared world titles such as Destiny and The Division all at least have some kind of narrative structure. We can't say for sure either way, but let's just hope that Rare are aware of the potential issues this could pose. Quests While there won't be a single overarching narrative to guide you throughout the entire experience, Sea of Thieves will be telling plenty of smaller, individual stories. This of course will be done in the form of quests. As we've already mentioned before, players will have the option of going to towns and cities and ports to accept quests from NPCs, if they should wish to do that rather than just freely sailing the high seas. In addition to these structured narrative-driven quests, Sea of Thieves will also feature secondary, procedurally generated quests. We imagine that these will come in handy in case players want to farm loot or booty. Treasure Hunts Treasure hunts will be a major part of the Sea of Thieves gameplay loop, and what we know about them sounds really interesting so far. Players will have to acquire maps that'll reveal the location of these treasures. Sounds pretty regular, right? Well, what's interesting is that rather than adding markers to your in-game mini-map, you'll have to physically look at these maps in the game and compare them to your surroundings, and then navigate with respect to landmarks. The treasure itself will also physically exist in the world, so after finding it, you'll have to actually carry it back to your ship, while also making sure that it doesn't get snatched away by rival pirates, or that you don't get killed by other enemies while you're doing so. In-game deaths Dying in Sea of Thieves will involve a lot of unique and interesting mechanics. When players die, they'll find themselves aboard a ghostly ferry that is transporting various other goods. In this environment, players will be able to interact with said ghosts, but what's really interesting is that to get back to the world of the living, you'll have to convince the captain of the ferry to let you off the hook, which is something you'll only be able to do if you accomplish certain tasks or quests he gives you. If you died with your ship, its sunken remains will remain underwater too, where other players will be able to venture to claim your treasure and loot, though you will be able to recover your vessel by asking a magical mermaid to do so. Communication being a co-op multiplayer game, communicating with your crewmates and fellow pirates will obviously be very important while you're playing Sea of Thieves. You will, of course, have the option to do that via your headsets, but in case you don't have access to one, the game will let you do that by using in-game prompts through a radial wheel. Options such as Follow Me or Help Me will obviously be included. But what's interesting here is that the dialogue you can choose from will be contextual, so it'll vary depending on your location or even depending on what role you're playing as crewmate on the ship. These phrases will also automatically get translated in case the person you're communicating with is playing the game in a different language. Crossplay Microsoft games in the past have occasionally not supported crossplay at launch. Gears of War 4 comes to mind here, but thankfully enough that won't be the case with Sea of Thieves. That's right, people who are playing the game on PC and people who are playing it on Xbox One will be able to play it with and against each other, and that'll be true right from the day the game launches. Additionally, the game will also be part of Microsoft's Play Anywhere program, which means that if you purchase it on Xbox, you'll be able to play it on PC through that same purchase, and vice versa. Xbox One X Enhanced Sea of Thieves will also sport some pretty impressive enhancements for the Xbox One X, which is to be expected considering it's a major upcoming first-party release by Microsoft. On the Xbox One X, Sea of Thieves will run at a native 4K resolution, so no checkerboarding will be required, while Rare have also promised that the usage of higher resolution shadows and textures will put the game's visual fidelity on system at par with PC graphics. It remains to be seen just how much truth there is to that statement, but it definitely sounds promising as things stand right now.
And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.